Okay, let's get started. Thanks uh, for joining us today. I'm Mark Shepesing, the brand and marketing manager at Cathexis. Today's session is going to be on the power of integrations. We hope you find it beneficial. It will be about 40 minutes to an hour long. During this time, your microphone will be muted. However, if you have any questions, you can please submit them in the bottom panel of Zoom. You'll see there's a little icon there. At the end of the session, we'll have a Q&A and go over some of the questions. Um, the poll we asked you to complete, if you're just connecting now, you can complete it or you can close the poll and complete it later if you want. It'll show up in the bottom panel as an icon. The session today will be led by Gus Brecker, our Global Business Development Director. He has many years experience and a vast knowledge of the video surveillance industry. And he will be supported by Dale Brum, our product manager, who has a lot of experience with our plus 140 technology partners. So now I'm going to hand over to Gus to start the session. Thanks, guys. Uh, thanks, Mark, and uh, welcome to everybody. Thanks, uh, and uh, it's good morning or good afternoon, depending on where in the world you guys are. Um, I think this is a subject that is very close to my heart and is one of the one of the major differentiators um, of Cathexis technologies and something we've been working on. We've been working on integrations for the last 15 to 20 years. So just quickly going straight into what we're gonna to cover today. First of all, I'm gonna give you a bit of a Cathexis overview and that's for people who don't know Cathexis very well. You might've just recently become a partner or who don't know us at all. Second thing we're gonna look at is what integration is. Um, why should we integrate? What products integrate with Cathexis? How do we integrate? Then a little bit of a case study, some examples of, of the integrations. Um, and then a bit of a product integration demo actually showing you our user interface. And at, this at that point, I'll apologize in advance. For, I'm gonna go into quite a lot of detail. For those people who, um, who feel that it's a little bit too much detail, I apologize. For those people who feel that it's not enough, I apologize as well. And then we're gonna go into questions and answers. So right, who is Cathexis? Um, so Cathexis is one of the world leaders in video management solutions. We've been around about 25 years in the marketplace. And as you can guess by the, 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 that amount of time, we've been, we were involved in video in the old analog days. And we were already doing integrations during those analog days uh, as well. And our product is sold in over 60 countries. Just to blow our trumpet a little bit, on the right-hand side of that screen, you'll see that we won the Benchmark Innovation Awards for three of the last four years. Now, Benchmark is an independent organization that does assessment of uh, products in the security industry focusing a lot on video surveillance and they reward companies that innovate in such a way that those innovations are useful to the end user rather than just innovating for innovation's sake. So that's one of the reasons why we won that award those three years. So looking at some of the market sectors that uh, Cathexis covers, you know, we covered probably all the market sectors that you guys work in, anything from banking, uh, to retail. And in all of these sectors, you'll find that these integrations can add value. So in banking, for instance, we might integrate with cash counters and point of sale devices. In retail, we inter integrate with point of sale. And with recently, we've just integrated with a smart, a smart shelf system. And of course, in most of the, these areas, there's fire that we integrate with access control, um, weighing scales in the mining industry and in retail, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm going to cover some of these in a bit more detail. I obviously can't cover all the integrations that we've done in detail because we'll be here all day. So I'm going to try and limit my presentation to about between 35 and 45 minutes. Quickly just showing you what the Cathexis Vision uh, ecosystem looks like. Obviously, our primary objective is to talk to video and video cameras. And we're talking about video and data from those cameras, not just video. Once we've received that video, we then need to um, have some intelligence to decide what to do with that video and data. 
So we have recording servers that we, we integrate with. We also have to write that video and data into some form of storage. Now that storage could be on the recording server. It could be on a NAS, it could be on a SAN. It could even be on the edge of the camera itself. You then need to enable the, the uh, people who want to view all this information, access to the, to the information. And for that, we integrate with our client servers. We've got a smart video wall to enable automatic switching of, of cameras to, to monitors. Uh, we then have uh, access, uh, allow access to remote clients to dial in, whether it's via a mobile app or a laptop, wherever, anywhere remotely. And of course, third party integrations, which I'm going to cover today. And then we also have our own video analytics and license plate recognition suites. All of this, and we have to also take, take cognizance of the, of the, the, the privacy of, of people, uh, which is, and of course, we placed a lot of emphasis on GDPR in Europe and Poppy in South Africa, and also look at um, the possible threats on the cybersecurity side of things. So you can see from this that Cathexis Vision is not just a system sitting recording, it's a whole ecosystem that allows our customers to provide solutions to their end users. So what is integration? Well, without telling you the obvious, it's the ability to merge two independent products together in order to provide a more effective and efficient solution. Now, some may say effective and efficient are the same thing, but they're not really. You know, effective, effectiveness is the ability to achieve your ultimate objective, whereas efficiency is the ability to achieve that objective in the most timeliest and efficient manner. And ultimately, what we want to do is try and return, uh, increase the return on investment for your customers. And I think it was Aristotle that once said that the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. Again, that's an obvious statement. And the way I read it is that, you know, all these integrate these items that are integrated together can add a lot more value than a whole lot of disparate systems working uh, independently. Just looking at the types of integration that affects us, uh, types of products that we integrate with, obviously access control is probably one of our predominant uh, uh, integrations that we do. And you've probably seen from the earlier slides that most of the logos, there's more logos in access control than any, any others. Parking systems, which are used in, uh, in obviously shopping malls, et cetera. Intrusion alarms, tills, which are used in uh, retail, but also in the hospitality sector and casinos, scales, which are used in retail, but also in the mining industry. So if you're weighing gold or weighing uh, silver or diamonds, um, you can verify the, that transaction with video. Fire, which is probably the most encompassing because almost every single commercial building by law has to have a fire system. Fence monitoring systems for those people who are not using our video analytics, they might want to use a microwave or a taut wire or a uh, fiber-based uh, fence monitoring system. System health monitoring, and that would be a health monitoring system that, that monitors the environment. Uh, way bridges, which is used in mining and quarries. Video analytics for those specialized analytics products where um, our analytics doesn't quite cover that particular requirement. Escalators and elevators used in shopping malls and, and other buildings, airports, etc. Intercom systems, I think, speak for themselves. Barcode readers, we do a lot of integrations for the logistics industry where they are scanning parcels and also for goods receiving areas in uh, retail uh, areas. Cash counters, as I mentioned earlier, in banking, casino type of environments. And we've recently integrated some systems in the healthcare industry, uh, some nurse call systems. So that just shows you um, some of the products that we integrate with, and it's quite encompassing. If you look at the value of integrations, you know, some, some may be thinking right now that, uh, well, so what's great about this? There's a lot of products that integrate. Well, I think there's two, two things to look at integration. The one is the, the breadth of integration. In other words, how many products does Cathexis integrate? But the real value is added in the depth 
of the integration that we do. And that depth really is how we do the integration, how deep we go the integration, what features do we offer in that integration? And that's really what adds the value to the Cathexis integration, as opposed to a lot of the other products that are on the marketplace. So what I'm going to do now is just quickly, we've got a couple of different ways that we integrate. So we, there's two ways that we, we do integration. The one is via an API, where the third party system, and that could be a building management system, it could be a PSIM um, or something like that, uh, integrates with our system. And there you can see the building management system is sitting as a master. And it requests video and data from Cathexis. And we can push alerts, events, and video to that product. And the decision and control is taken in the, in the PSIM or the, the BMS, the, the, that particular product. We don't have a lot of control over the depth of integration that's done there or the service that is offered to the client. The other integration method, which allows us a lot more control, is where Cathexis is acting as the master. And there you can see our product is uh, talking to all the peripheral devices and uh, writing that into the database and retrieving from the database and also receiving transactions from the third party system into Cathexis Vision. Uh, we either then associate cameras with logical points, logical areas that, um, uh, that, that are allocated in the third party system. We can then control your video walls, IOs, PTZ cameras, send emails, play audio messages, et cetera, et cetera, and even control third-party systems from our product and also enable your database mining. So that is the, the, uh, the method of integration where we can add the most value. And I'm going to go into quite a lot of detail <clears throat> on that particular method of integration rather than the first one. So why integration? Well, I think with integration, you can really provide a single user interface for most standard operational functions. There are going to be things that you cannot do from the this, from this single user interface, but for most of the operational functions and the standard operating procedures, you have got a single user interface. And I also believe that, any, that, that video can add value to any transaction that's been received from a third party system. We can create real-time alerts. We can control systems automatically on events that are created in Cathexis or in the third-party system. We can enable quick database mining of both video and data. And we can minimize errors and improve the response times. Once again, improving effectiveness and efficiency, which is a driving force behind most of our developments. So let's just look at some of the features of integration that we're going to cover today. We're going to cover real-time decision-making. So how does Cathexis make decisions on events and transactions that are received from third-party products? We're going to look at triggers. We're going to look at actions. We're going to look quickly at a map interface at how we do overlays. We're then going to go into quite a lot of depth in the database mining. And then I'm going to touch on the alarm management from, a, from our alarm management gateway perspective. So the first thing I'm going to do is give you some examples of integrations and some of the capabilities of those particular integrations. As I mentioned uh, previously, I'm not going to cover every single one, but this will give you an idea of the depth of integration that we offer. So firstly, let's look at access control. So with access control, you can trigger events on particular transactions. For instance, on particular users, you can choose a user and say, if it's user A, I want to do this. You can trigger on user groups, so you can allocate users to different groups. You can trigger on transaction types, whether it's an anti-passback transaction or a door held open, door forced, anti-tamper, and you can have different actions depending on the type of transaction and type of trigger that's, that's occurred. You can trigger on lockdown, on any suspended tags. So somebody with a suspended tag is trying to get in. You wanna trigger, have a different action to someone with a normal tag. You might want to have a different action depending on what time of day somebody is coming into the building. So if somebody comes in after five o'clock in the afternoon, you might want to alert 
a manager that if somebody comes in during working hours, you just want to record video. And then of course your system status of so the system is not working, et cetera, et cetera. And then what actions can you take due to these triggers occurring? Well, there's numerous. We can record videos to databases with chosen resolutions, chosen frame rates. You can send an alarm to a control room and that would be to our alarm management gateway, which I'll touch on later. You can move a PTZ camera to an area and I'll show you that live on a, on a, on a site. You can switch chosen cameras to selected monitors on the video wall, <clears throat> excuse me. You can play an audio clip that might be a pre-recorded audio clip. So if somebody tries to come into an area after hours, you can play a message to him saying that this area is out of bounds at that particular time of day. You can send emails, you can open and lock doors automatically, and you can display transactions on a map and control another third party system. So to give you an example of that, controlling third party systems is what we call cross-platform integration. So let's say, for instance, you've got you've integrated with a fire system and an access control system. You can instruct the Texas Vision to when there is a fire, instruct the access control system to open all the doors. So that is what we call cross-platform integration. And of course, you've got your database mining. Your database mining would, would enable you to find transaction by any field. So any field that we receive from the access control system we can go and search on. So that would be card holders, card numbers, user groups. We can look at scheduled transactions, transaction types, anti-prospect, door held open, et cetera, system anomalies, like, anti, like the uh, system failures. And you can also follow users through multiple doors and generate or email reports. If you look now at fire, intrusion, and fence detection systems, I've grouped these together because they are quite similar. Again, you can trigger on zones. So you might have a, a three different zones uh, and you might have a group of buildings and each building has got a different zone or each floor in a building has got a different zone. Uh, alarm type, whether it's an alarm, whether the system has been armed or disarmed. And of course you can look at schedules. And then the actions that you can take are quite similar. You can record your cameras, you can send alarms to a control room, you can move the PDZ camera. Um, I mean, that's quite a powerful feature specifically for fire. You might want to zoom in on an area in, in that particular zone so you can really see what's going on with that fire. You want to switch cameras to monitors. You want to play audio clips, send emails, again, open doors and control third party systems. So you'll notice as I run through these integrations that the actions we can take are quite similar, but there are some slight variants depending on the integration that we do. And of course, your database mining, you want to now go and your database is different because your fields are different. You can go and find specific zones, zone groups, specific alarm panels, and you can now go and search for those particular panels, find them, and then play the video back that's associated with those particular transactions automatically. Looking at point of sale, very different from the other two. Yeah, you can trigger on tools, for instance. I want to look if there's a, a particular tool that I, that, I, that I suspect is giving trouble, I can trigger an event on that particular tool. I can trigger on a transaction amount. So if the amount is over a certain value or a transaction type, that would be something like a refund, for instance. You might have triggered an event if there's a refund because you suspect that there's um, fake refunds being done. Transaction items, quantities, item codes, Types of tender, so whether it's been paid with a credit card or cash or whatever it might be. And of course, this aids you in trying to prevent sweethearting, which is where there's collusion between customers and tellers. Again, your actions are very similar. So if there's a particular a refund at a counter, what do you want to do? You want to record that, that video. You want to send an alarm to a manager, whether via email or SMS or via a, a control room environment. Move the PDZ camera, switch the camera to the monitor, play an audio clip, et cetera, et cetera, much like all the other integrations, but your triggers are quite different for point of sale. 
And then your database mining is also very different. You know, you can go and find transactions by any field. So I'm going to go and look for all the transactions done by cashier X uh, between yesterday and this morning. Uh, or you can you know, go and find transactions by the tender amount, the payment type, whether it's being paid by a credit card or a, a particular type of credit card, an American Express or Diners Club. And you can also go and search for particular items and even item quantities. So if you find that somebody's buying 100 plastic bags, it's rather a suspicious transaction. It's something that you might want to look for. And of course, you can now generate reports, which can be automatically emailed. Quickly looking now at license plate recognition, which is another type of integration we do. And we do this via either license plate recognition on, uh, on the edge or uh, on the server environment. Again, here you can trigger on specific license plates, specific users that have been registered with the system, particular vehicle types or color, specific ANPR detectors. So if you've got multiple license plate recognition detectors around a city, you can trigger on that. Selected groups, for instance, blacklist groups. And with our license plate recognition, you can create as many different types of groups as you want. You might want to have a staff group or a blacklist group. And we've also got a lot of traffic rules where you can look at average speed. We've got a loitering algorithm uh, so that people come into an area, but they don't leave that area within a certain period of time. And then we have a multiple visits algorithm as well for people who are cruising around and continuing, continuously coming back to the same area that may be outside of a school, for instance. Again, the actions are similar. There's only so much you can do, but the thing is you're triggering these, uh, these actions on different items. Moving PDZ cameras, calling the control room, telling the control room that somebody's loitering in, in an area. Automatically switching a camera to the monitor to show the operator who is doing this cruising playing audio clips, sending emails, et cetera. And I'll show you the license plate uh, database a little bit later on a live uh, video. And again, you can go and find the transactions by field, look at license plates, even partial plates. So any part of a number, you want to go and find all the transactions that contain the numbers three, four, five. Driver names, ANPR groups, average speed, loitering, multiple visits, et cetera, et cetera. And very similar for face recognition, but obviously facial recognition doesn't have license plates. But you may have registered faces or groups of faces. You might want to go and trigger an event if they're on a particular gender or ethnicity. If somebody's wearing glasses or not wearing glasses. Selected groups, again, with face recognition, you can create multiple groups depending on the face recognition system that we've integrated with. And look at the time periods, system status, et cetera. And once again, the actions are quite similar. So you might want to, for instance, trigger an event if somebody is in the terrorist, the suspected terrorist group, you might want to go and trigger an event which sends an alarm to a control room, switches the camera to a monitor and plays a sound in that control room. And your database, again, mining the database allows you to go and find video footage. Okay, so that just gives you a, a bit of an overview of the depth of the integrations. And I obviously haven't covered all of them because we don't want to be here all day. Um, just to touch quickly, we do have a map interface where we can give live representation of transactions on the map. So for instance, if there's an anti-passback or if the door's been open too long, and we can even disarm and arm alarm panels from the map, and you can take actions from the map as a user interface. We also have overlays on the system. So the overlay allows you to show the transactions on top of the video. Um, so this is an example of a point of sale. And you can, show, you can have this this overlay is shown on the live video. It can also have it shown on the recorded video because the metadata base, the metadata is also recorded with along with the video footage. 
And you can change the uh, the size of the font and the size of the overlay and the transparency, et cetera, et cetera, because obviously we don't want to hide all the video with the overlay. Right, what I'm gonna do now, <clears throat> excuse me while I take a sip of water, is quickly show you some comparisons of a, of a particular scenario with an integrated solution versus a non-integrated solution. Now to do this, I'm gonna look at a bit of a case study where we've got a national key point, which is an airport. Now this key point has got 30 kilometers of perimeter fence. So they've got a, they'll have a fence monitoring system in there. And let's say they've got up to a hundred logical fence zones, several hundred fire zones, 300 access control doors and over a thousand cameras. Now picture the operators in the control room trying to monitor a thousand cameras, 300 uh, access control doors, a couple of hundred fire zones and a hundred area, a hundred logical zones on the fence line, all with disparate systems. How are they going to do this? So let's quickly look at what would happen typically on a system that is not integrated. So let's say there's a trigger from a fire or an access control or an intrusion or a fence monitoring system. Um, let's say it's a fence monitoring system and it's triggered, the system's triggered and it gets sent to the third party interface. So, so far, so good. The system triggers, about a second later, the operator is notified by the third party system that there is a breach in zone number 56 of the fence, for, instance, for an example. What does he do now? He needs to now try and work out which cameras to look at so that he can verify that this is a valid breach or a false alarm. How does he do that with, when the system is not integrated? Well, the only way he can do this really is to have a lookup table, probably on a piece of paper or on an Excel spreadsheet. He now has got to go and find that lookup table and run through it and find zone number 56. Then he has to look and see, okay, well, zone number 56, I need to look at cameras 102, uh, 250, and number five. He's then got to switch to the surveillance system to find the relevant cameras. And now he's got to go and look at those cameras and see, what, is this a false alarm or is it a false positive? And if he just determines that it's a false positive, he can now deploy the response team. So I've put in some estimated times here, uh, which added all the times together comes to about 57 seconds. So from the time the alarm has occurred, I've estimated that the operator has taken a minute to decide to deploy the response team. Now in an integrated solution, let's look at the exact same scenario. The the system triggers an event. Again, the operator is, inter is notified via the third party interface or, or via the Cathexa system. But here comes the difference. Because there's an integration done, the Cathexa system knows what to do when that alarm has been received. It can automatically switch the relevant cameras to the selected monitors. It can automatically move a PTZ to the area and zoom in on the area from where the alarm came. It can automatically play an audio message or send an alarm to a control room. And automatically the, the cameras are in front of the operator. He doesn't need to go and try and find them. And he can immediately deploy the response team. So I estimate that on this, we're talking about 11 seconds. So the difference between 57 seconds and 11 seconds could mean the difference between life or death. It could mean the difference between a terrorist attack or that terrorist attack being nipped in the bud. And that is the difference between an integrated system and a non-integrated system. And on top of that, you also have the ability now to easily find those transactions and find that information in your metadatabase. And your metadatabase allows you to go and search the metadata from the various sources, find the transactions, and all the associated video footage that goes with it. So if that's not a compelling reason to integrate, well, then I don't know what is. What I'm going to do now, though, is show you in quite a lot of detail how the metadatabase works and how to find video footage 
And in doing this, you'll see in quite a lot of detail the depth to which we can integrate. So this is just an example of a view of the metadatabase. You can see on the left-hand side, the list of transactions. In the center, we've got the video that is associated with the specific transaction that you have clicked on. On the right-hand side, there's details. So this is an access control database that I'm gonna show you now. Uh, the transaction detail. And these fields are dependent on the integration itself. What fields do we receive from the third-party system? Those are the fields we'll show you. There's an easy search, a couple of search options. We got what we call an easy search, where we decide what we think people are going to search for mostly. We've got a smart search filter. We've got the ability to export group uh, data. So that could be a group of transactions. And we've got an ability to generate reports, automated reports, which you can email automatically at certain times of day. And we've got our general navigation tools uh, on the system itself. So what I'm going to do now is actually show you the integration database working in action. So what we've got here, if I, you'll see on the left-hand side, you've got the transactions in the middle of the video and on the right, the data. If I click on a transaction now, which says the repairs covered, it'll bring up the video that is directly associated with that particular transaction and play it back. I can now go to the video, I can zoom in, I can zoom out. I can now, I've got a whole lot of different navigation options. I can play back in double time, which I'm doing now. I can easily jump back 10 seconds. So I'll just click on one button. I can jump back 10 seconds and play it again. Yeah, I'll jump back 10 seconds. I can also move around in the video using the timeline. So I've just gone back three seconds and play back again. And what I can do is I can also choose a little video clip. And I can uh, export that. And you'll notice that when I export this, it exports the video and the transaction at the same time. Okay, so what I'm going to show you now is how we can associate more than one camera with a particular transaction. So if I look at this particular transaction, which is the reception area, you'll see the people are walking in over there. So I've associated four cameras with one particular access control door. There you can see the, the user arriving at the door, the transaction occurring. Okay, now when I export this and I save this to disk or wherever I want to save it, you'll notice that it exports the, the video transaction, uh, the, the, the third party data transaction metadata, but it also integrates, uh, also exports all of those four cameras. So that's to show you how you can associate multiple cameras with a single third party system transaction. What I'm going to show you now is how a particular action where we've actually decided to zoom in. Sorry, I just shut down the video by mistake. Sorry guys, I just pushed the wrong button here. Yeah. Okay, sorry about that. So what I'm gonna show you now is how we can actually zoom in automatically on a particular transaction. So you can see this lady here, as she tags the transaction at the access control door, the Cathexa system will automatically zoom that PTZ camera into that area. There you go. And you can see on the top left-hand side of the video, 
the, uh, the overlay as well. So now I'm going to show you how to do a database search. And you can see here there's an easy search. And with a whole lot of drop downs. So we can search by username, by terminal name, by description. So I'm just going to choose a particular. particular access control point, which is the long cupboard. And that shows me all the transactions for that long cupboard. I can choose a username. So I'm gonna just choose, let's choose Marco. And you can see all his transactions. So these are the easy search functions that we've got within the access control database. We've also got a more intelligent search, which we call our smart filters. And this is now a smart filter. We can, when we've got a whole lot of different things that we can choose. For instance, I can choose time, event description, terminal name, zone name, username, et cetera, on this particular transaction. And in the time settings, you can, there's a whole lot of options. You can choose month to date, week to date, last quarter, last year. You can choose specific times. You can choose the previous hour, previous day. So there's a lot of options where you to filter by time. I'm, for the purpose of this, I'm just going to choose the week to date. And I'm going to choose a particular user. Now with particular users, you can choose a groups of users or single users. So I can say if it is one of three people, do the search. So now I'm just going to search for one person. I'm going to say, in the week to date, show me all Neville Shields transactions. So what it's done now is it's searched, it's found all of Neville Shields transactions in the week to date. I'm now going to set for, to play back three seconds of pre-events and three seconds of post-events for each transaction. I'm going to play back in double time. And on top of that, what I want to do I've got the option to play these back sequentially, to loop them or to play back singly. So I'm going to play them back sequentially. And by doing this, it'll automatically follow Neville through the building by playing sequential transactions, three seconds pre-events, three seconds post-events. And there you can see it's now playing the sequential. You can see the overlay. And this is, this is what we sort of coined our follow me feature for access control. And I'm using access control as an example here. Um, this, this could be, I could be showing you facial recognition or, or anything else as well, but access control is a good example to show you. So this is just an example from another site, some different transactions. And the reason I chose this site is because there are some anti-prospect, we turned the anti-prospect on. And there are some anti prospect transactions. You can see there's denied anti prospect in. And unfortunately, we don't normally have it on, but we turned it on, and this person went out without tagging, and now she can't get back in. <laughs> and then she gets someone to come and help her, and now the person holds the door open for too long. There you can see the door's been held open for too long, and that's a transaction that was received into our database. And now you can go and find those transactions. Also, what I'm going to show you how is how we can export transactions. So I can go and choose a particular time and date on which to do the, the export. And I can choose whether I want to export the transaction via CSV, the group of transactions via CSV or via PDF, etc. Choose where to export that to. The other thing I can do is create a report. Again, this is not only for access control, this is for any of the integrations where we've got a metadata base associated with it. And what I wanna do here, I wanna go and set up this report using our standard interface. I want to fill, now create a filter to find the, the particular transactions that I wanna report on. 
So I want you to report on any anti-passbacks, any denied anti-passback in, uh, door open too long. And door not opened. And I want to report the week to date. I want to report via PDF. And I want to send that report daily at 12 o'clock every day. Okay. And you can now choose recipients. I can enter email addresses. And this will automatically be emailed at 12 o'clock every day. This report will be emailed to this particular email address. Okay, so that is an example of the access control. Just to give you a bit more detail and to give you a better feel, I'm going to show you the license plate recognition as well. So this is, um, as you can see, it's a similar interface, but the, the fields are slightly different. Obviously, we've got license plates in these fields. And you can see this particular vehicle driving along. You can see the license plate being detected. I can now go to my navigation and move forward and back through the video, pretty much like we did on the access control. And I'm not going to do a search for a particular group. So let's go and look at a, all the transactions for a blacklist group. Okay, and there's all the transactions for blacklist group. I can double click on the transaction that I'm looking for, play that back. And you'll see because this person's been enrolled into a blacklist group, we can put detail there as well. So there you've got an image of the person, the driver, uh, image of the vehicle, some detail, what type of car it is, etc. And you can enroll people in different groups. So if it was a staff group, you might have wanted to open a barrier for the person automatically. Just looking at a couple more access control transactions here. There's another person that's been enrolled and he's enrolled in the staff group. And that particular uh, detector has detected him coming up the road. So to enroll people is quite simple. I'll quickly show you how that happens. So let's say we want to enroll this particular person. All I do is I can uh, right click on the transaction and now you can go and enter the license plate information into the system where you can enter the driver's name. We'll call him Joe Bloggs. I think it's a Hyundai or a Hyundai. Heaven knows what model it is, but it looks like it's a silver car. So we'll put silver in there. And what you can do now, as you saw with that previous transaction, you can add uh, reference images, et cetera, et cetera, onto the system. Okay. And I can enroll him in a group. Again, you can create as many different types of groups or as many different groups as you want. And you can easily add vehicles to the group from this interface, or you can import vehicles in other ways into that particular group as well. It doesn't have to be done from this particular interface. What I'm going to do now is just change to a different site and, um, and show you how we would find a license plate by a partial number plate. So this is connected to a completely different site. And you can see how easy it was to switch between sites, by the way. So I'm going to go to a particular camera. I'm going to find a vehicle. Let's look at that little white car on the right-hand side. Let's zoom in on that license plate using our zoom feature. And let's go and find all the transactions for that particular license plate. So that's FV72DG. So 
So I'm going to look for license plate and I'm going to look and see, I'm just going to put in partial. So it was FB 72 DG. I'm just going to put in 72 DG. And it'll now go and find all the transactions for 72 DG. And you can then play those back. So that could be across, and that doesn't necessarily have to be only on one license plate detector. It could be on 20 different detectors in a particular city. Okay. So that's all the transactions for FV72DG. We've just searched for 72DG. It just so happens that there's only one vehicle that's come into this area with those particular characters and numbers in the license plate. So I think that gives you a fairly good overview of, of the metadata base. And obviously for face recognition, it's slightly different. For point of sale, it's slightly different. For fire, it's slightly different. For a, for a retail smart shell, you might want to trigger an event if somebody's taken five high value items off the shelf and then go and find the video. Point of sale, you want to go and find if there's been multiple of one particular product taken, which is an unusual transaction. And the only way to find the collusion and sweethearting in retail is via integration. I'm quickly going to touch on the alarm management gateway, which is pretty much a subject of its own, really. So I'm just going to really touch um, very quickly on it. But the alarm management gateway allows you from a central control room environment to receive events and transactions from multiple devices and multiple sites. And the operators do not need to know how to connect to each site or how to connect to each camera to view those particular events. The system automatically does everything for you. Okay. So here's an example of a particular transaction. So what I've done is I've taken uh, in, in the, um, the setup, I said, if there's an anti prospect transaction, send an alarm to this control room. So in the, the top, you've got your incoming alarms, then you've got your current alarms in the middle and your history at the bottom. So I'm gonna just double click on this rear exit anti prospect transaction. And there you can see this person trying to get in and he's finding someone desperately to try and let him, let him in because the system's telling him his anti prospect The control room has automatically connected to the site. It's automatically popped up live video. It now allows you to archive the video to the control room environment and to add any comments in that you might want to add and then close that particular alarm. It also comes up with procedures for the person to follow. Now, if I go to the history, you'll see all the alarms down here. And you can look at the complete history of this particular alarm. You can see which site it came from, uh, what the unit ID was, when the event happened, when the operator handled it, if there's any comments or any recordings associated with it. So this was a recording taken. And you can see this was an alarm that we showed you earlier from the meta database on site. This is now the same video at the control room that was transmitted to site on an instruction from, from our system. Okay, let's just look at another one. This is an ANPR blacklist from a particular site. Again, this came to the control room. The operator can handle that alarm and follow the procedures and then you can now escalate this to a supervisor. I'm not going to go into all the detail of the alarm management gateway, but it is a very powerful tool for a centralized monitoring perspective um, where people want to use a sort of black screen environment. Because if you've got a thousand cameras and all these doors, you need a black screen environment because the operators cannot make all the decisions for themselves. So I think I've covered quite a lot of detail with our integrations. So just to summarize what we've covered, I think we've looked at what integration is. We've looked at which products integrate with Cathexis and Cathexis Vision. We've looked at how we do integration either via the API or via data that's pushed to Cathexis. We've seen how it works now. I think we've covered why we integrate and hopefully I've given some compelling arguments. And we've looked at the benefits of integration. And what I'm hoping, is that with what I've showed you today, 
that you'll agree with Aristotle in that the whole is definitely greater than the sum of its parts. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get uh, open the floor for questions and answers and, um, and ask Daryl to, to come in and, um, and answer any questions that, that have been uh, posed, posed to us. Gus, can you hear me? Yeah, got you, Daryl. Okay, right. There haven't been too many questions come in on the Q&A, but um, one probably everyone wants to know is, is how do you license the device? It's on a, um, it depends on the application, whether it's an access control. So if it's an access control and it needs to be licensed in, into our system, you'll have a base license to get the main controller linked in and then a per location as Gus uh, indicated earlier, so per door. And then we have uh, a, all encompassing license, which will include a base and unlimited doors. Um, so that's the licensing option. If it's an alarm panel, it might just be a single base license with unlimited zones um, and not per zone. It really depends on what the integration is. Um, these are one-off costs on the licensing. Um, I see a question came in, is it a recurring license fee? No, on our integrations, it's not. It's a one-off fee um, and the only, up to any software updates will include any updates to those integrations free. All you would have to do is update your um, IP camera licenses. That's the only recurring license that will be required if you want to update. If you don't want to update, there are no recurring licenses on our software. Um, the other one that came in, how do I relate multiple cameras to a transaction? Um, you select a device. Um, and in the configuration setup, um, you allocate, you can allocate multiple cameras, I think up to four, there might be more, but you can allocate up to four cameras per location um, that will record on any transaction. So that shouldn't be a problem. Um, don't see any other live questions coming through at the moment. But however, as I say, um, it's a one-off fee. Um, there's no added um, cost to our integrations. What I do stipulate um, is that please remember we experts on our own software, but we're not experts on third party devices. So even though we have integrated them um, and we understand the, the mythology on how to integrate and there's, there's always an app note that we produce with any integration we do and we stipulate what product, what specific firmware, what model um, that we integrated with. If we were aware of any third party licenses that are required um, for the linking on the third party side um, for the, the API, um, that's all in the app notes um, and they are detailed there. Um, so we, we try to be as comprehensive as possible in the app note and there will be an app note and possibly um, we're working through all the white papers. A white paper will be available for any integration, which will give you um, detail on what you can expect straight out without having to read the whole app note on the integration. I saw there was another question from Stephen. Does the licensing cater for all systems integration? Did you cover that? Uh, I have not covered that, no, sorry. I did not see that. Uh, um, the license, it's per device. So um, depending on um, what the application is, you would need a specific license for that application. So it's not a generic integration uh, license. Um, it will be, put, obviously we would have to have integrated the device first, and then there will be a specific license allocation for that device. Um, but yeah, the, the, the bottom line is obviously we need to have integrated the, it first. And if it's not integrated, we would probably require a, we would not probably, we will require a business case to, to um, see how um, viable the integration is and what the um, return on our development costs is, are going to be. Gus, there's a question there on uh, VMS into telecommunications. You on the marketing side, have we developed, um, delivered there? We have, 
We have indeed. I think we can take that offline and uh, we can we can chat about that uh, offline, I think. So Niran, if you can contact me separately um, or we'll contact you and we'll have a chat about that. I saw Grant asked if we'd integrated with, with SAP. Yeah, um, no, we haven't. Uh, as far as I am aware, we have not done any um, direct integrations with SAP. So just to, to contradict you a little bit, Daryl. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, quite a few before, years, quite a few years back, we did a way my time. Yeah. We did a, oh, we, we did a Waybridge solution where um, they were having problems with the Waybridge where people were invoicing the wrong payload. Um, so they would be invoicing 19 millimeter stone instead of 16 millimeter stone or whatever it was. And they'd be getting a backhander. So what they did is they were using SAP and this the their system they, they developed using our API. And they pulled a, a snapshot from us and they actually printed a picture of the payload onto the invoice so that they could tie the um, type of stone along with the, the invoice that was generated uh, to prevent people invoicing the wrong product. So that was not an integration done by us, but it was an integration done by someone else using SAP. Are you guys there? Yeah, I'm here. Um, I, I understand I'm blurred. I um, haven't quite worked out how to unblur myself. Um, not a good image. Okay, um, there's another question. Right. It's better looking that way, Daryl. <laughs> yeah, um, let me just see. Uh, choose virtual background. No. Uh, let me. Just on the uh, marketing uh, side of things. Um, Tomorrow, uh, email will go out to all the attendees that will have a link uh, that they can then use to download uh, marketing brochures and presentations. Uh, so some of the source material will be in that link. Um, if they, if anyone requires any additional marketing material, they just need to reach out to us and we can organize that for them. Okay, we have another question from George. Uh, what happens if two events happen uh, almost at the same time simultaneously, how does the system decide which is more important? Um, the system will, obviously we, we look at milliseconds. So the first one that comes up, um, unless it's extremely possible that they come up in ex absolutely the identical time, um, it will still take the, whichever one comes up first. The system's not deciding um, which one it is. Although you can through our event uh, notifications, you can actually create a, a priority on specific um, events. So you can set up custom event notifications and you can decide. So if it's in the entrance door, you can put a priority on the entrance door to actually um, have priority, say, over an internal door. So there's a possibility there. Um, we have another one from Medici regarding vehicle registration. Um, we don't, you asking, can we use a vehicle registration make and color to act and access ID of the driver to grant access to the premises and not allow the same driver to bring a different car? Um, that is, no, we can't. That would have to be a, a separate integration that uses our API to actually extract the information both from the access control system, which will read the, the driver ID and from the ANPR system that will merge those together and do the linking. We do not link that within our software. Another good question there, Daryl. Can I use a normal camera for LPR yeah. and face recognition? Um, yes, correct. Um, you can. Um, obviously, the application um, would be different on the, the app side. So if you use our embedded LPR, you can use any camera. However, um, if you're not using our embedded LPR, then you would require um, a camera that is specifically L has an embedded LPR engine on the camera. Um, likewise, with face recognition, um, if you are using the face recognition um, software, the analytics within our software, then you would uh, require that um, you, yes, you would re require a, a non-face recognition camera. Um, there are face recognition cameras available. I see um, 
uh, we are integrating those currently. But yes, um, provided you use our embedded uh, LPR and face recognition, you can use any camera for that. Um, from Robert, if a subsystem can be integrated into Catexas VMS or as well into a PSIM platform above a connected and integrated, are there any pros and cons that you may suggest? Um, not sure how to answer that. Gus, do you have any comments on that? I think it depends on the operating processes of the solution and, the, and the, what the customer is looking for from the operating processes. Some people like to use the building management system as a master. Some people like to use our system as a master. So it really depends on how the people want to use the system. Obviously, we've got more control over the depth of integration if we do it using our system as a master. The building management system method uh, would mean that we'll, we can send information to them, but what they do with that information is out of our control. Okay. Um George was just going back to priorities on events happening simultaneously. Yes, the priority would have to be pre-programmed prior to the actual event. You would have to assign priority to um, an external door rather than to an in internal door. Um, Stephen's asking, uh, do we support IoT devices? Um, currently, we have not integrated any. Um, suffice to say that um, it's, 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 yes. Going down the line, um, it's certainly a possibility. Those are all the questions I have at the moment. Um, I think we've answered most of that. Okay, so I think, Mark, I think we can uh, call it a day and then we can always answer any questions um, offline um, that we haven't covered. So guys, thanks very much for attending. Uh, at this point, I'd like to just thank our technology partners. You know, without our technology partners, None of this would be possible. Um, and it's very important that we work closely with all these different products. And the stronger the relationship is with our technology partners, the better solution we can provide you and the better support we can provide you down the line as well. So thanks again to all our technology partners for making all these integrations possible. Thanks everyone for attending, for taking your time out to talk to us. Please feel free to chat to uh, anyone in, in, in your the regional offices um, or send an email to info at cat.co.za if you want any more information or you can go to our website to gather a whole lot, a whole lot more info. So I think on that note, we'll, we'll close the, the webinar. So once again, and thank you for Daryl and Mark for, for assisting with the webinar as well. Great, and thanks guys for presenting. Yeah, thank you very much.